This message is entitled, Understanding God's Heart for Refugees and Immigrants. As Christians, scripture should inform our views about everything pertaining to life. If we want to understand how God views marriage, we need to look no further than the Bible. If we want to understand the family dynamic, we need to look no further than the Bible. If we want to understand the heart of God concerning abortion, sexuality, work, money, anger, and forgiveness, we need to look no further than the Bible. However, today there seems to be an illness in the body of Christ. There appears to be a cancer within the body of Christ that seeks to eat away at the hearts and minds of many believers, leaving the body incapacitated. This cancer is called conformity. The Christian of today seems to get his views from politicians, the world, and or the majority. We are conforming when God says to be not conformed to this world, but to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Therefore, if we want to understand what the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is, we need to look no further than the Bible. But in this day and age, I hear statements such as, do whatever makes you happy, live in your truth, and it is your world. Sadly, many Christians have adopted these ideas when Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. One subject that has been and is a source of great debate is the issue of immigration. Now more than ever, immigration has been a hot topic. From border control and walls to detention centers and families being separated. While politicians and the world have their view on immigration and how immigrants should be treated, what exactly does God say about the immigrant? What is God saying about how the Christian should treat the immigrant? If we want to understand the heart of God concerning immigration and his desire for how he wants the believer to treat immigrants, we need to look no further than the Bible. The first thing that I think is on the heart of God concerning how he wants the Christian to treat the immigrant is to be empathetic. When God was giving Moses the law, he included some things about how the Jews at that time should treat the immigrant. Exodus 23, 9 says, You shall not oppress a sojourner, for you, knew, for you know the heart of a sojourner, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. God is saying that because the Jews of that day were immigrants in Egypt, because they were oppressed and enslaved in a strange land, there should be an understanding of how that felt. Therefore, God is saying to be empathetic. Empathy is defined as the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, to be sensitive to and vicariously experience the feelings, thoughts, and experience of another. With empathy comes compassion. Leviticus 19, 33 to 34 says, When a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as a native among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So what exactly does this mean for the Christian of today? The Christian faith is one built upon love, grace, and mercy. As Christians, we should recognize that we are all sinners deserving of hell. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, because of this act of love, because of the grace, mercy, and compassion shown to us, God commands that we show love, grace, mercy, and compassion to others, both Christian and non-Christian, both citizen and immigrant. As Christians, aren't we all immigrants anyway? Aren't we all pilgrims passing through? For the Bible says that our citizenship is in heaven and this world is not our home. The second thing I believe is on the heart of God for how he wants the Christian to treat the immigrant is God wants the Christian to be both welcoming and hospitable to the immigrant. In Matthew 25, 35, it says, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. This chapter of Matthew is Jesus' final discourse in this gospel. For right after this, Jesus would be betrayed. Early in this chapter, he goes through the parable of the ten virgins, the parable of the talents, before finally arriving at what is called the judgment of the nations. In this judgment of the nations, Jesus addresses who would inherit the kingdom and who would not. In verse 33 and 34, it says, And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
He then follows up in 35 by saying, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. The disciples then questioned Jesus, saying, When were you hungry, and we fed you? When were you a stranger, and we welcomed you? Jesus then concludes by saying, Truly I say unto you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. What exactly does this mean for the Christian of today? Part of the mark of a believer, part of what distinguishes the Christian from the non-Christian is the way that we treat people. Christ is saying that his sheep treats humanity with kindness and compassion. He is saying whether the human is male or female, believer or non-believer, native or immigrant, to be welcoming, to clothe, to feed, knowing that the one who has done this has done this as if it were Christ himself. It says in Hebrews 13 2, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Therefore, we are to be welcoming and hospitable to the immigrant, treating the immigrant as if it were Christ, not because of the promise of reward or heaven, but rather because this is the heartbeat of God and in turn should be our heartbeat. To sum up this whole matter, there is a message that needs to be proclaimed throughout this earth. The message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This message is the good news. This message is a message of hope, a message of joy, a message of peace, a message of security. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This message is one of healing and deliverance, of redemption and restoration. This message is a message of love. Beyond what we can offer the immigrant, be it food or drink, the greatest thing that we can offer the immigrant is Jesus Christ himself. We can offer the immigrant the one who created heaven and earth, the one who causes the blind to see and the lame to walk, the one who causes the deaf to hear and the mute to talk, the one who shall supply all their needs according to his riches and glory. We can offer the immigrant, the one who knew them before the foundation of the world, the one who sees and knows the very number of hairs on their head, and the one whose plans and thoughts toward them are for good and not of evil to give them hope and a future. This immigrant, who could be on a journey escaping, running from a life of despair and difficulty, lost and hopeless, all the while on a journey to meet Jesus, the great I am, the prince of peace, the lion of the tribe of Judah, could it be that the immigrant in God's sovereignty arrives on the shore of a foreign land to meet the one who says, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let us, as Christians, be empathetic and compassionate be both welcoming and hospitable to the immigrant, being ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of your hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ.